Government has got a duty to treat domestic violence as a serious crime. It's part of our duty. This is an American issue, and it demands an American response. But we cannot let up. Not when domestic violence still kills three women a day. Not when one in five women will be a victim of rape in their lifetime. Not when one in three women is abused by a partner. Domestic violence is abuse in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power and control over an intimate partner. This abuse can be physical, sexual, emotional, economic, or psychological. Despite efforts by lawmakers to address this issue, survivors are still in desperate need of relief, safety, and security. Awareness of resources for survivors has grown over the years, but many survivors still hesitate to access them. The experience of domestic violence impacts everyone. Um, so anyone can experience domestic violence, anyone can perpetrate domestic violence, but what we do see is that folks that have historically marginalized or historically underrepresented identities not only have um, unique experiences of domestic violence in which that identity might be a part of the abuse, but also experience more difficulties accessing resources. A lot of folks that have not had trust in systems based on their gender or based on their race are going to maybe have a little more barriers to seeking services because of their abuse, given the fact that their identity has not been supported or protected or felt safe within other systems. That can be a part of the abuse itself, where someone knows that uh, the person that they're abusing doesn't feel comfortable accessing services through law enforcement, accessing services um, or support through the medical system because of their identity. Many factors such as race, class, and gender influence the rates of domestic violence. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, more than 10 million adults experience domestic violence annually. While men are also the victims of domestic violence, women are more than two times as likely to be abused by a romantic or sexual partner. Access to resources such as housing also impacts these statistics significantly. Over 65% of people who've identified as homeless have also identified as having relationship violence or domestic violence as a link to their houselessness or homelessness. And so for a long time, um, over 40 years, we've known that um, homelessness, houselessness, and as a barrier for people to leave. And in fact, during COVID, um, it was reported by um, several of our member programs that people were ending up in the hospital with much more extreme injuries because of their inability to find shelter or to leave during that time. In 1994, President Bill Clinton signed the Violence Against Women Act, giving protection for women who had experienced abuse. The bill was reauthorized by President Barack Obama in 2013. Despite this, today, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence reports that an average of 20 people are physically abused by their partner each minute. Lawmakers can make a, a massive difference in services for survivors by investing in our communities, uh, by investing in our um, communities' infrastructures. So a lot of the barriers and challenges to survivors accessing services, support services, is um, their, the lack of public transportation, the lack of housing. Um, so some of these uh, these laws being pushed through that support um, infrastructure in our cities will allow folks to um, get out of these situations in, in ways that are more accessible to them. There's so many different things that lawmakers could do, as well as holding the offenders accountable. While we don't necessarily have a lot of faith in the court systems, as well as law enforcement and police due to their racist and discriminatory practices, there is a big piece of what we do that's missing, and that is reaching out to the offenders. State legislators and representatives are influential and crucial components in bringing an end to domestic violence across the country by passing bills to protect and help the survivors. There are several pieces of legislation right now that have been filed to help protect survivors of domestic violence or intimate partner violence. Some of those bills have to do with preventing abusive um, litigation. So when uh, a survivor finds 
themselves brought into court over and over again uh, for very frivolous matters. It's one of the ways that after a survivor has left intimate partner violence, uh, partners continue to um, harass and uh, abuse them. Um, there's also legislation uh, on that has been proposed to try to make it easier for people to obtain restraining orders, um, which is really important. Restraining orders are one of the key ways that a survivor can work with, with police and uh, local shelters to make sure that everyone knows what's going on and it's well documented. It's also very helpful um, if, for example, um, a survivor was married and is going through divorce proceedings, it really establishes a record of abuse. So when someone wants to file legislation, they usually go to their local state representative or their state senator and they share their story. A lot of the legislation that we file is because someone came to us and they explained a situation they were going through and why it was important for the law to change. There are still huge steps that need to be taken to prevent domestic violence. If this issue is more of an importance to the federal government, the number of victims and survivors would drop significantly. Without action, the lives lost to domestic violence may rise even more.